As a hypnotist, if I had a client in my office, I could do what's called an instant or rapid induction. And it would have that wow effect and it would be like, oh, she's so magical and powerful. And But I don't want that. Um, I'm there to help that person. And what I've learned over all these years is part of how I want to help them is for them to be empowered. I don't want them to see me as the powerful one. I want them to see that they have the power within themselves. So in power is empowerment, right? So it's within themselves. And so taking away a rapid or instant induction and transferring it over to this is here, this is what hypnosis is. And I'm going to teach you how you can do it for yourself. All hypnosis is actually self-hypnosis and the hypnotist is just a guide. So even with a rapid or instant induction, the person has to follow along. They have to be a willing participant. If somebody came to me and they've never done hypnosis before and they have a bunch of fears about it, so that means their guard is up and they're worried and they're concerned and they're like a little you know, leery, it doesn't matter if I did an instant induction with them, they're still not gonna go into hypnosis. So it all has to do with the person anyways. And I figure it's part of my job to educate them about their mind and hypnosis and from day one so that they are most receptive, so that they do let their guard down, so that they feel safe and they feel comfortable and they feel secure. So kind of passing over the power back to them, which is the truth of what it is anyways, but then they can use the tools, the skill sets of hypnosis in their day-to-day -day life. So I don't just mean, you know, the times that they decide to lay down and do some hypnosis, which is the same as meditating. So it's not like, okay, right now I'm gonna go meditate or right now I'm gonna go do some hypnosis. It's, it's all day long. So if you think about going into meditation, it's, identical to going into hypnosis it's identical to i'm going to take a nap so with hypnosis or meditation all you're doing is you're deciding to hover between wide awake which is beta and asleep which is delta and so if you just think of the normal process of falling asleep you get more and more and more and more and more and more relaxed right <laughs> and then you sleep and then you wake up and you get more and more and more and more and more and more alert. And so all we've done is we've captured what happens in this in-between state. And some people call it meditation and some people call it hypnosis. And then what you do in the, those periods of time is, is different depending on what the intention is. So to be able to, you know, look, look at that and go, well, I would rather a person know the skill set of how do I relax my mind? How, how do I bring it here and then bring it here and then bring it here so I can go to sleep at night? How do I go from here where my conscious mind may be worrying and doubting and fearing or regretting and spinning all sorts of things that I did today or I didn't do today and conversations? I, how do I go from that, which is beta, to a little bit more relaxed which is alpha and if we hovered there that's called an hypnosis is called um, somnambulism so we just call it different things although it's all the same and then you go a little bit dip, deeper and it's called deep somnambulism and then you go to what we call sleep as far as the athletes that i'm working with science is now proving this zone state that's pretty well known among athletes which is the state of mind that they enter into where everything seems to disappear around them they're focused on that one thing that they're doing like if it's a shotgun shooter they a target shooter they they see that target so clearly it's like big like a trash can although it's really like that size everybody disappears they could have crowds and camera and noise and chatter but they don't hear hear it Time seems to fly by and they're so connected with that target that it's just like nothing else exists. And what can happen is their body just intuitively and instinctively knows when to pull the trigger and they'll break the target practically every time. Um, so that's called the zone state and all athletes experience it. But so do other people. Artists experience it, musicians experience it, and you actually experience it in your day-to-day -day life. 
when you're in, when you're connected. You know, like if you're in a conversation with somebody in a restaurant and everything disappears around you, and next thing you know, it's nighttime and the chairs are being put up and you didn't even notice it because you were so engrossed in that conversation. That's the zone. So science is proving that that's the alpha state. So for an athlete, again, it's great that they're empowered and I've taught them how to bring themselves down into this alpha state or possibly even theta and even go to sleep at night if it's the night before a competition, you know. But for the rest of us folks, how do I calm myself when I'm going into a date? How do I calm myself when I'm going into an important meeting or an interview? How do I calm myself when I'm going into a funeral or something like that? There's a lot of different, you know, day-to-day -day things that it's good to know how to manage your mind. Thank you.